Boom. I don't know. It's, I, I, I like to have a people who are open minded because so, I, you know, I feel like I know, if, uh, if people are doing what they're, I say, pre-wired to do or what what they were, what their role uh, required them to do through human history. Or are willing to connect with that, I think that you know they, they could have a better life and they're going to eat healthier, right? So I did an article a while back and I used this uh, clip from a newspaper that's been circling uh, through the internet for quite a while now, and it was somebody who was complaining about hunters. And they were saying, "Why can't hunters get their meat from the grocery store where no animals are harmed?" And I thought that I've was the that. most ridiculous statement I've ever read, right? I've because I mean, where do you think those animals come from, right? Right. So the same people who, who bitch and moan about my lifestyle are the same people who are still out there wearing leather goods and eating hamburgers and everything else, right? And I'm like, all I did was take a more responsible role in the food that I put in the mouths of myself and my family, right? And Reducing so the my, processing. And, like, and I'm probably that, yeah. not the best example because I lead all this, a lot of other stuff that I'm not supposed to. But when it comes to my, our primary food source, protein source, my family eats very healthy. All of our meat is organic. We rarely buy any any beef or anything like that. We, you know, we eat wild hog, we eat um, no guy, we eat wild turkey, we eat white tailed deer, we eat ducks, we, eat, you know, things that I come home with. Right. And I provide for my family. Right. I mean, and that's something that is um, been role based in a family since the dawn of time. Right. Human history. Right. Fred Bear once said that bow hunting is the history of mankind. Right. And recently in, in the Subiu Caves in North, North, South, Northeast South Africa, they found remnants of arrows and uh, broadheads that dated back 65,000 years. Right. So that's how long we've been doing it. Right. So if you're open to that, I say, you know, what you're going to learn as a hunter. So first of all, you're going to connect with your ancestry, which is a very personal, intimate experience. Right. Because you, you feel that connectivity, but you're also taking a more responsible role in, role in the meat that you consume, mm -hmm. and you play a bigger part with your family as a provider because you're giving them meat that you know is healthy, not pumped full of chemicals and preservatives right. and everything else that they that they throw in the meat to make it look good for weeks on end in a in a in a, in a grocery store case, right? Right. So, so that would be my message to you: is that Look, I like, like eradication is cool, and a lot of people want to do that. But if you want to open your mind to hunting and take a more responsible role in your food source while also connecting to your ancestry, then I want to encourage you to do that. Right. Thank you. Thank you um, so very much, Kevin. <laughs> That's I, oh, a good conversation. I, I will say. <laughs> I will say again, um, my a good friend of mine, I haven't talked in a long time, he's a great guy, I love the piece, his name is Tovar Cerulli, okay. and he wrote a book called The Mindful Carnivore, and he was a vegetarian turned vegan turned hunter, because he wanted to write a book, and his book was about just proving, or really like he was trying to write something fact-based against hunting, but all of his research did nothing but support hunting, right? And we haven't even talked about hunting as a tool for conservation. Right. Right. I mean, it plays a real practical role. People love all the anti hunters. They love to walk around the wildlife management areas and enjoy nature and go out in public spaces. I'm like, we pay for that. Right. Right. You call me, they'll call me somebody who doesn't love animals. And I'm like, I literally pay for a place where you go walk out and enjoy animals. Right. And if you look at our, our American model for conservation using hunting as a very viable tool to, to, to help manage that, right? We started out in 1900 with 500,000 white-tailed deer. And using hunting as a tool for conservation, we have over 30 million white-tails roaming the country now. That's a pretty right? substantial so, increase. So some of these guys, they'll tell me, you hate animals, you hunt, you must hate animals. I'm like, part of the reason I hunt is because I love animals. I'm an animal lover. So I feel like I take part, not only do it, am I connecting my food source, I'm connected to my lineage, but I feel like I'm doing something really positive for wildlife uh, conservation, habitat preservation, um, overall conservation. I mean, who doesn't want to be a part of that? Right. So I encourage you to do that. So the reason this conversation started was I've never hunted before in my life. Um, I grew up in a household that had no guns. Uh, it was a very different politi political leaning household. Um, and 
my views and such have changed quite drastically over the last, say, 10 years. And I have an interest in doing the boar hunts or hog hunts in Texas. And you are from Texas, if I understood correctly. And you were giving me some very good information on why I should consider not just doing the hunt that I'm hoping to do, but looking into hunting more as a sport, a hobby. Hmm. Okay. A lifestyle. Yes, a lifestyle. And you, and you were talking lineage and things like that. So what else did, did I miss here? So, you know, one of the things that uh, I wanted to mention is, you know, I still, I'm still a writer, an outdoor writer. So I still write a lot of hunting and shooting articles for a lot of different magazines all over the place. So Kevin not long so ago, <laughs> not long ago, I did a, uh, I wrote a, a bow hunting feature uh, where I uh, interviewed a friend of mine. Uh, his name is Jim Shockey, so he's really well known in the, in the hunting community. Uh, and so I was talking to him. So part of that feature article I wrote for Hook and Barrel magazine was an interview with Jim Shockey. And some, one thing that he talked about was uh, was really pretty impactful, right? So we're all here because somebody in our families, at some point, they were good hunters, right? You exist because people were good hunters, right? All the people who hate the life that I live and hate the things that I do and and would try to convince people that I don't like animals. They literally exist to tell me that because somebody in their family was doing that. That's how they got here. Yeah. yeah. So if you look back, Fred Bear, like I said, Fred Bear, uh, you know, he said to uh, the history of bow hunting is history of mankind. And so that's kind of what Jim Shockey was touching on that everybody who exists today is here because something in their life, somebody in their lineage was a good hunter and and honestly many people through their lineage were good hunters right or we would survive and thrive correct so anyway so that's it well i really appreciate your time connected yes sir thank you very much you got me more interested in things i never thought i would be interested in and we still want you to eradicate pigs (laughs) i still need help there too and that's the goal so next year we're hoping to get down there and get some really good bids and maybe use some of your cool new products that are coming out so so. really appreciate it Thank you, sir. Thank you.